on today's Locked on Thunder podcast. We're going to dive into the Oklahoma City Thunder losing to the San Antonio Spurs. They came out flat. They simply did not have it tonight. An update on Kenny Hustle's trade rumors and an update on Vic Critchie's injury update. There's so much to talk about. We're going to get into all of it right now on the Locked On Thunder podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your teams every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. Email the show, LO Thunderpod at gmail.com. On today's show, brought to you by Prize Picks, we're going to dive into the Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the San Antonio Spurs. Mark's comments on the trade rumors. The team came out very flat tonight. An injury update on Vit and shout out Aaron Wiggins again uh, for coming through this game. But again, today's show is brought to you by Price Picks. Check out PricePicks.com. Use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Price Picks is a daily fantasy sport game made easy at PricePicks.com. Promo code NBA. Let's start the way we always do. With our game overview, Kendrick Williams was out in health and safety protocols. Vit Critchie was out with an ankle injury. Uh, Isaiah Roby was out in the G League. Tail Maldon was out in the G League as well. Poku out with a G League assignment as well. And then a late add to the injury report, number one, Paul Watson Jr. out with a G League assignment too on that two-way contract. But Derek Favors was out with a back injury. Now, he's been nursing this back injury pretty well all season, and I'm fascinated by the fact that he misses this game with a back-to-back coming up Friday, Saturday against Charlotte and Cleveland. He's typically missed one of those back-to-back games this season. Will he play both now that he's missed this game Wednesday? Uh, Will he play just the one that he's used to playing and and accustomed to playing? You think that the Thunder would like to have him against the Cavs? So does he just miss back-to-back games and miss the Hornets game? Uh, A lot goes into that Derek Favors uh, injury uh, if he can come back and play. Zach Collins was out for the Spurs. Uh, Hernan Gomez was out for the Spurs. They just traded for, so he's not with the team yet. Uh, Josh Primo was also out for the Spurs. Uh, Trey Jones was upgraded to available, so he was able to play in this game. Uh, the Thunder start out with SGA, Lou Dort, Josh Giddy, and Aaron Wiggins starts in this game as uh, Jerry starts as well. So Darius Baisley was back to the bench, and goodness, we have to talk about Darius Baisley later on in this episode. But I want to start with the pre-game press conferences that, that Mark talked to us before the game. And he said, look, anytime you have a good player like Kendrick Williams, they're going to be in trade rumors. He says, our organization really likes him, speaking of Kendrick Williams. And he really likes us from all indications. And that really means a lot to Sam Presti. I know that much. So that was kind of his big comment on it. He also added in there after that comment, they will do what's best for the team. But this in reality, is a bunch of nothing, right? Like, we kind of knew, hey, the Thunder like Kenneth Williams. Hey, it seems like Kenneth Williams loves the Thunder from everything he said publicly, and apparently everything he said privately from all indications. Again, indications would mean private talks that we haven't heard of, and then, of course, him raving about the, about the Thunder organization and raving about where he lives in Oklahoma. Remember in the, in the preseason media day, he says, well, this is kind of his environment. He likes to be outside, likes to be... Uh, you know, by the water where he's at right now, likes to uh, kind of live a more calm lifestyle. He's not somebody that's going to go chase a bigger city than Oklahoma City. Now, he, he had a lot of praise for OKC in the preseason media day availability. You can go back and listen to that episode, um, and you can find those quotes pretty much everywhere when you research Kenneth Williams. But uh, this is somebody that likes the city, likes the organization, and, and so that means a lot to Sam Presti, according to Mark. But again, they have to do what's best for them. So the reason I say it's much on nothing is because we knew – the Thunder would have to do what's best for them. We knew Kenny Hustle liked Oklahoma City. It's just a matter of it's a very coveted player right now. Uh, I think that he can help 30 teams in the NBA. Uh, he also talked, Mark did pregame, uh, about what the team's missing right now. And unlike me on our crossover podcast with Nick Engstead of Lockdown Maps, where I just point out the on the court issue of like, hey, if you have Kenny Hustle down the stretch, 
you probably make up that two point difference and you win that game because Kenny Hustle has been that good for the Thunder this season. Uh, but the first thing Mark pointed out was the locker room edge and the locker room uh, kind of camaraderie and the locker room kind of gel, if you want to put it that way, where he kind of gels the team together and brings everybody closer. Every team needs that. Every organization needs that. Even the Rockets right now has had some turmoil in their locker room. And now obviously that seems to be kind of solved by now, but they went through a rough patch where they need some veteran leadership and they're the worst team in the Western Conference, although they upset the Jazz and so now they're tied in the win column with the Thunder. But that's why I say every team needs it and we all know that he can provide huge impacts on and off the floor for a contending team. I mean, look what's happening right now in LA. You have Russell Westbrook benched down the stretch against Indiana and he skips media availability. You have LeBron's comments after the game. You have Frank's comments after the game about how he benched Russ to try to put a, a team on the floor that wants to win and that has the best chance of winning. Folks, we've been around Russ Westbrook his whole career. That's not going to sit well with him. Now, Russ is a consummate professional and Russ will uh, always want to play basketball, but I could see that rubbing Russ the wrong way where, of course, he skipped the media abilities after the game, but also that lingers with him long-term. I mean, think about uh, the attitude switch in Carmelo Anthony whenever he was benched in that 2018 series against the Jazz for Jeremy Grant late in that game, in Game 5. And I'm not saying that Russ is at that stage in his career or anything like that or that Russ deserved to be benched. It doesn't sound like he's deserved to be benched, but I want to be transparent here. I won't have time to watch this game till Thursday morning, so... I'll, I'll know more for Friday's episode if Russ deserved to be benched or not, quote-unquote, but it seems like he shouldn't have been benched. So you know, that's a locker room right now that is hitting a ton of adversity in, in L.A., and Kenny Hustle can come in there and provide to them kind of what they need, a guy who will do the dirty work, who will put in effort, and that effort that Kenny Hustle provides a team is infectious within that organization. And shooting. Kenny Hustle's been a really good shooter in, during his time in Oklahoma City. So every team could use Kenny Williams. The Thunder could also use Kendrick Williams. And so it goes back to what we said last week on this podcast. I don't envy Sam Presti at all because this is a move right here that it, no matter what happens in a month from now, our podcast that will go live after the trade deadline and our live stream on the Lockdown Podcast Network with Josh Lloyd and our, our panel of experts, no matter what Sam Presti does, keeps Kendrick Williams or trades him, I can defend it with ease. And it's explainable. And it's a, a move that if he keeps them, it's the right decision. If he trades them, it's the right decision. And those are the hardest to make. And that's why Sam Presti gets paid big bucks. Because right now in the moment, it looks brilliant no matter what you do. Because every team needs them. So that will give you leverage to get a good package. But you also need them long-term and presently. So uh, we'll see what happens coming up. And again, Mark had a quote about it. It was very um, interesting to hear that, you know, that Mark and the organization agrees with what we perceive to be reality that, that Kenny Hustle does like Oklahoma city and does like the organization. Uh, and we'll see how it goes from there on out. As of course, the Thunder have to do its best for their organization long-term. Now pregame Mark also gave a shout out uh, to Vic Critchie's injury update. And so it sounds bad. <laughs> it sounds pretty bad, which is uh, brutal for somebody like Vic who's fought back from that ACL injury to start his career that uh, started his NBA career, of course, got injured for the draft and uh, was going to be out his entire rookie year, was out his entire quote-unquote rookie year, but of course he still classifies rookie this year uh, without playing a full season, uh, without playing a, a game. Uh, and he's played his NBA career, he's played his NBA debut this year, so now that'll be his rookie season this year. But the end of the month seems optimistic. It seems like it's more going to be the all-star break, uh, and it sounds pretty bad. Now he's not traveling with the team, and that's just due to the fact that they want to limit their traveling party due to COVID, uh, but that also shows he's not close. I mean, if he was close and it could be any game now, he would be traveling with the team, trying to work it out, trying to kind of test it out pregame and every and all these games. He's not close, at least not for this road trip. We'll see at the end of the month, but it sounds like All Star Break might even be pushing it. And this is this sounds like a very severe uh, ankle injury, which happened pre Christmas to to kind of give you the timeline on that pre Christmas uh, before the uh, at the NBA G League Showcase Cup against the Blue Coats. So it's been a long time that Fitz been out. And he's a guy that's still with injuries before in the past, and it just sucks that it's going back on him. But there's still a lot of time left in the season, a whole second half to play, uh, and hopefully he'll be back on the All-Star break. And then from there, he could get a lot of minutes uh, because the Thunder are going to want to explore this roster and want to kind of see what he can provide. And so guys who are getting a ton of minutes right now might see their numbers dip in the second half post-All-Star break, uh, and, and it might be Vit 
who takes some of those over. So a lot to get to still. We're going to talk about how the Thunder lost this game and go through some individual performances. But first, I want to tell you right now, our good friends over at, folks, our good friends over at Price Picks. Price Picks is incredible. It is truly phenomenal. Price Picks has the best NBA daily fantasy sport prop game on the market. Price Picks offers more NBA props than any other daily fantasy prop operator and offers all the superstar players as well as bench players only recording a handful of minutes each game. Price Picks offers any prop you can think of from points, assists, rebounds, threes made, etc. You pick two to five players and over under on their projections and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. That's just you versus the projected numbers. I recently placed a huge play on the over for Ty Jerome points and it cashed in because I knew they'd be playing Ty Jerome more given the current state of the roster. So that's where listening to Lock on Thunder and playing price picks can win you some money. Price picks also allows mixed sport entry. So you can take the over on SGA points, combine it with the over on Patrick Mahomes yards thrown Sunday and just have a ball out there. Use their award-winning app on the app store, on the Google play store. Price picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Go to pricepicks.com today and you can use their app or download the app. All users deposit, and uh, they'll get the, a bonus whenever you use the code NBA. You get $50 free on your first price pick entry uh, that you do with a single point entry when you use the promo code NBA. That's right. All users that deposit using our code NBA will get $50 free at pricepicks.com right now or their award-winning app. Price picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. We are back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod and email the show, LO Thunder Pod at gmail.com. On today's show, we're going to recap this Spurs game as well as talk about what's ahead for the Thunder after losing yet another game. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day, every single morning. We're here for your talk with Thunder Basketball. If you're a second listen, go check out Lockdown Now. Lockdown Now is a nightly recap show of every game around the association. So go check that out on the Lockdown NBA YouTube channel, on Spotify, on a podcast, and on any other podcatcher that you use. And I want to get back into this game. Well, folks, against the Spurs, the Thunder just came out flat. It was almost a dead environment. Uh, it was embarrassing how, how few people were there. It's like you count them on one hand. And I'm, I'm not trying to be Charles Barkley here and just clown on San Antonio, but it was a very, very bad environment. But look, you get paid millions of dollars and it had no impact on the home team who dominated this game. So that's not an excuse, but you don't have your own juice and then the environment brings you nothing. That's how you kind of lapse into this really, really bad game, which is abnormal for the Thunder. The Thunder have typically had a ton of energy and a ton of, a ton of effort this season, but this young team couldn't do it tonight. Uh, and really this team has been in the top half of the league defensively all season, and they were dreadful on defense today. Just absolutely dreadful. But again, this has been the outlier for them, so it's hard to crush them for this really bad game, bad performance, bad effort, whenever it's not the case repeatedly. Now, if this carries into next week and, and the back-to-back -back is terrible effort and next week's terrible effort, then you can start to you know rattle some cages a bit, but it's just one game in a long season where they don't produce much uh, intensity in this game the lead only changed twice during this game the thunder only led by two points in this game the spurs grew a 34 point lead wiggins saved this game from getting out of hand entirely in the first quarter the spurs dominated the second half and dominated in the closing seconds of the, of the second quarter to really put this game out of reach okc outscored was outscored in every single quarter besides the fourth quarter whenever okc won the final frame 18 to 12 the Spurs bench outscored Oklahoma City's bench 38 to 37. OKC had 14 turnovers, so the Spurs nine. The Spurs had 17 points off turnovers. OKC had 12. The Spurs had uh, more second chance points, 19 to four. They won the fast break battle, 19 to 10, which I always tell you is a key category for the Thunder in terms of wins and losses. The Spurs won the fast break battle again, 19 to 10. Uh, OKC actually had more points in the paint, though, 58 to 54. Oklahoma City won the uh, rebounding battle 60 to 57. And then here's the part where you start to see the two sides separate. The Thunder shot 38% from the floor, 25% from deep, and 80% at the line. The Spurs shot 29% from the floor, 37% from deep, 
and 64% from the line. So very bad night for the Spurs from the free throw line. And by the Thunder standards, a bad night for them at the line at 80%, although in general, that's a nice line for a team effort. Now, Oklahoma City had four in double figures, one with nine points. That was Josh Giddy. The Spurs had six in double figures in this game. Doug McDermott had 20 points. Jonathan Murray had a triple-double, 23 points, 14 assists, 10 rebounds, 55% from the floor. And the Spurs win 118-96. to 96. An awful, awful performance from the Thunder, an awful effort from the Thunder, except for Aaron Wiggins, who deserves a ton of praise. Wiggins had 19 points, 8 rebounds, a steal, a block, 72% from the floor, missed one shot in the entire first half, only missed two in the second half, just finds easy shots. And when you say you make easy shots, it's not always endeared uh, by the fan bases, right? Like whenever you aren't flashy and are just taking your basic shots, but it's not like the defenses are ignoring Wiggins. He's just working. He's outworking you to get these easy looks at the rim, to get these quality looks uh, around the around the floor. He's relocating well. He's playing within the flow of the offense well. Credit to Mark as well for this. But still, uh, he's doing his job to get these open shots. And, and I know that after every big game, and he gets back in the starting line at this, this scheme and everything like that, the question always becomes, you know, why isn't he on a standard NBA deal? You invested in him in the draft, picking him at 55 overall. Why is he not on an NBA contract? And I know that, uh, some of you uh, might miss an episode here or there, which I hope that you don't miss in any. I hope that you subscribe to the show for free across all platforms and you're here every single morning like you're supposed to be. And I really appreciate those of you that are. Uh, but uh, remember that sources have told me that, that the deal's coming, but it will not happen before the trade line. I'd be shocked if it does because the sources told me that they're going to uh, operate this entire trade season with that open roster spot to look to take on a two-for-one trade opportunity. As the Thunder operate $23 million under the salary cap floor, uh, they're going to... Uh, look to use that as a salary dumping ground. And so they're going to keep that roster spot open again for two for one trade opportunities down the line. Now, post deadline, I fully expect the Thunder to convert Wiggins to an NBA contract and uh, for that to be another, uh, what is it called? Another pellet on the wall or pelt on the wall. What's the phrase? Anyway, another uh, one in the win column for Sam Presti in terms of converting two way deals to standard NBA contracts. So uh, I, I do expect that to happen, but again, this is why it's not happening yet because the Thunder wants to operate with an open roster spot heading into the trade season. And as they're operating with $23 million under the salary cap floor to uh, use at their disposal to help facilitate trades uh, and to take on bad, bad money in order to get extra assets. So that's to watch out for. Uh, you know, I know that if every big game, we want to crown Wiggins and get him the contract. It's coming. It's coming. The Thunder do really like Wiggins. Um, the fan base really likes Wiggins. I really like Wiggins. Uh, it's going to come, but it's not going to come uh, all that quickly in terms of this next month. Uh, but SGA in this game never could get going. And the team goes as SGA goes. He gets 13 points, two steals, seven assists, three rebounds. But he shoots 23% from the floor, 0 for 4 from 3. Very ineffective night. Never really had a quarter where he broke out of it. Uh, never really had a, a sign of life, so to say, in, in this game. Uh, after an incredible four-game stretch, again, tonight's energy was just not there, right? Like, he had a, he had a great four-game stretch. We know what SGA is capable of. We know that he's a player that's going to be an all-star caliber guy. Just wasn't there tonight. And maybe the environment plays a part in it where it's just not a great environment and you get down early and you just kind of pack it in for the night. But uh, there's no reason to depend on about SGA. I, I've told you, do not panic on SGA. I remain on that front uh, for the remainder of this season. I think that he's a really, really good player. Uh, I think that he deserves the max contract, and I think that all of this will work itself out in the near future. But coming up, we've got to talk about everyone's favorite player, Darius Baisley. We need to talk about Darius Baisley. Um, he plays well. Trey Mann plays well. And the problem with this game is the players who didn't play well. The Thunder are not going to win many games whenever the following players are not up to par. SGA, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Darius Baisley, Jeremiah Robinson Earl did not have favors, did not have Kenny Hustle, could only play Muscala six minutes due to that, due to that ankle injury. That's not going to win the Thunder many games this year whenever they're already fighting an uphill battle of being one of the youngest teams in the NBA and not having the talent to compete in general. So that's how the Thunder lost. All that right there. And we're going to dive into some individual guys like Baisley coming up uh, and, and tell you what's ahead on Lockdown Thunder and for the weekend with the Thunder as well. But still... We're going to talk all about that coming up. First, we're going to talk about our good friends over at Built Bar. Built, Built Bar is a fantastic protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Go to builtbar.com. Use the promo code LOCK15, 15% off 
of your next order. 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which is around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and a dozen net carbs. You know which one to pick, and it is Built Bar. Built Bar is for you. It does not taste chalky or chemically uh, or any of that other crap that other protein bars taste like. This is a healthy option, but also tastes fantastic. It's covered in 100% real chocolate. Every single flavor is, and boy, do they have some incredible flavors. They have coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, and many more. In fact, Built Bar is always coming out with new limited time only flavors. So check out Built.com uh, often so you can see what's new. So again, go to Built.com and use the promo code LOT15, 15% off your next order. Built.com, promo code LOT15, 15% off your next order. Use the promo code LOT15 for 15% off your next order at Built.com. You can use that over and over and over again. So keep getting Built Bars and keep getting 15% off. That's B U L I T bar.com. Make sure you go check them out today and use the code LOCK15, 15% off of your next order. We are back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your teams every day. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. It's at R Y L A N underscore S T I L E S. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. Email the show. Hello, Thunderpod at gmail.com. Thank you for making Lockdown Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We are here for you, talking Thunder basketball free and available on all platforms. For your second listen, go check out Lockdown Bets. It's a daily one stop shop for all of your gambling needs. Lockdown Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis from our gambling insider, Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms, just like Lockdown Thunder. So make sure you go check them out and win some free money by listening to Locked on Bets. All right, it's time. It's time for everybody's favorite topic, Gary Spacely. Now, you know that this podcast has typically been a, quote, pro Baisley, end quote, podcast. Look, tonight was a disaster. Uh, and, and I think that part of the problem might be that not every Thunder fan gets to watch every Thunder game. Like I'm in a fortunate enough position where it's my job to watch every Thunder game and it's my career to just sit here and watch every Thunder game home and away every minute. And I watch every game at least twice, sometimes three times. So I get to watch everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly of Darius Baisley and every other player on this roster. The problem with Darius Baisley is two things. A, consistency, which we've beaten into the ground here at Lockdown Thunder. Is a very hard time kind of stretching out a good stretch versus a very easy time stretching out a bad stretch. But also, which ties into consistency, there's no middle ground. It's never just a forget about game in a good way, right? It's never just a, okay, Baisley was there. He was just there tonight. Baisley either plays a near perfect game as he did for much of last week, as he has for three, four games now, where he plays a disastrous, eye-bleeding, awful brand of basketball. It's never just, okay. It's never just, all right, that was a good game from Baisley. That was a decent game from Baisley. It's either, wow, he was perfect tonight. All the Baisley haters bow down. Or he is just claw your eyes out atrocious get him off the team, cut him on Twitter. It's trending in the Thunder small universe, right? It's never, there's no middle ground. He gets too high and too low. That's not what you want. When you're inconsistent and you have no middle ground, it's hard to survive in this league. Mark pointed out earlier this year, he had the quote, there are more NBA players than there are NBA jerseys. And I know that they picked up his option, but we know the Thunder don't like extending players that, that aren't like, you know, of course, like a for sure good NBA player. Like we, we saw what they did last year with, with Hamadou Diallo and Sue Luke at the trade deadline. Look, the Thunder have an influx of draft capital this draft again with three first round picks. And they have to overturn this roster again. And they're running out of roster spots of, of kind of guys you want to keep around. To hang in this league, to survive in this league, he's going to get another shot. He's so athletic and he's so, uh, you know, 
he's such a, a, a nice potential prospect and he has great representation with clutch sports, but he cannot have very more, more of these just dreadful games. And again, I want to preference this. He had a really good week last week and I have been singing his praises every time he has a really good game. And I've been trying to, uh, I've been trying to explain his poor performances the best I can to where I'm not just doing what everyone else is doing uh, in the thunder content sphere of just saying, Oh, he sucks. He's terrible. Get him out of here. I, I, he, thou who shall not be named, right? I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to say, hey, this is where he's struggling. Is what I've done on this podcast before. But, but tonight's game, there's no defense for it. There, there's no, well, here's what he was trying to do and it just didn't work. It was just a really, really bad game. And then again, I'll afford him the same courtesy that we afforded the entire team earlier in this podcast. It was a terrible environment. It was a game where you got down early, you struggled early, and it seemed like the team for the first time in a long time just packed it in. And the team that usually fights back and usually is scrappy and usually uh, never quits, quit tonight. So maybe it's just a bad game. But with Baisley, when he has a bad game, you get scared. Right? You have PTSD flashbacks of other Baisley bad games. And maybe Friday against the Hornets, he goes back to how he was last week where he's playing really well and playing near perfect games again. I'm not trying to join the party of just bashing Baisley unnecessarily. I've I've called out his perfect games. I get overlooked a lot of the times. But tonight just showed you why he struggles so much. It's because he's not consistent and there's no middle ground. There's no mediocre game from him. There's never a game that is not nails on a chalkboard when it goes south or sing to the heavens when it goes great. He has to find consistency. He has to find a middle ground. And so far in his career, he has not. Mamadi played well, eight points, two missed shots, three rebounds, 18 minutes. I really, I really wish that we could have some truth serum here on Sam Presti. Like if Mamadi did not fracture his hip, he just waved Gabriel Deck in the preseason and bring on Mamadi out of the out of training camp. Is that what you do if he doesn't fracture his hip? I really wish that we'd know that uh, from Sam Presti. Uh, Trey Mann, fun little step back today, seven points, two rebounds, uh, 42% from the floor. One for three from three. Uh, he he really, really improves the watchability factor of this team in his 15 minutes in this one. And again, it's such a delicate balance for his development, right? If you're Mark, I understand why you want to keep him close and keep him on a tight leash and kind of make him eat his broccoli, so to say, uh, as Mark would say, and not just give him a ton of Skittles and ruin his appetite or however the phrase is going to end up going past broccoli versus Skittles. I get all that. But I do also get the fans that just want him to cook and want him to play 30 minutes and just watch this very exciting player that you have. Uh, so it's it's a tough balance of like, we all want to watch him play more, but we also want what's best for his de- development long term. And so if it means 15 minutes a night instead of 30 for now, but eventually he becomes a six man of the year caliber player or a starting caliber player, and so be it. But goodness gracious, even those 15 minutes he really helps you stick with this game. And, and that's what last year's team missed. Last year's team, when SGA got hurt and you shut down on Horford and this team got really bad and really fast and went on those losing streaks, they didn't have those players who you just could not wait to watch on a given night. I cannot wait to see Trey Mann pull off that step back every night and Trey Mann uh, perform every night. He's a performer. He's a, sh- he's a showman. Yeah, and last year's team, uh, they missed that. So that'll be good down the stretch of this, of this season. And we'll see if he sees a minutes uptick after the All-Star break as well and gets more of those Skittles. Ty Jerome played well again, 22 minutes, 40% shooting, uh, two for six from three, 10 points, a rebound of steal. Nice little game from Ty Jerome. But again, we went through before the break how many players were bad for the Thunder. That's not going to win you any games. OKC plus seven was the bet of the day. That obviously did not hit. The money ball pick was Lou Dort tonight. I had Lou Dort making the most three-pointers on the team, and it was Lou Dort who had three. Closest uh, next to him was Ty Jerome, who had two. So that obviously cashes in which is great for our uh, our standings. MVP of the game, I had Aaron Wiggins as the MVP. Uh, I'll just tell you that right now. He's really the only player that stood out in a positive way this game in, a, in an overly positive way. Friday on Locked on Thunder Podcast, we're going to do NBA stock watch of the league, NBA draft stock watch, and Thunder stock watch. So three segments of three stock watches, a lot of fun on a Friday. Saturday, we're going to recap the Hornets game. And Monday, we're going to recap the Cavs game from Saturday. So a lot to get into here on Lockdown Thunder. Make sure you subscribe for free across all platforms. 
Follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. And until tomorrow, be good. Be good to one another.